What I wanted to say, Madam President, um, what I wanted to say is this. If ever there's a place where we've got to forget, are we red states or blue states? We have to forget what we have on our bumper stickers, and we've got to come together and not be the red state party or the blue state party, but to be the red, white, and blue party for the United States of America. We must put aside partisan differences and ideological pet viewpoints. We need to act, and we need to act in the defense of the United States of America. The Senate has a great opportunity today and tomorrow to pass legislation to protect defend and deter a cyber attack on the United States of America's critical infrastructure. What do I mean by critical infrastructure? It is our electrical power grid, our financial services, our water supplies, those things that are the bread and butter of keeping America, its business, and its families going. Through voluntary participation, we can work with the private sector who owns and operates the critical infrastructure to keep our critical infrastructure hardened and resilient against attack. I worry. I really worry about the possibility of an attack. We know that there are already attacks going on, particularly in our financial services. We know that our personal identity is being hacked. We know that small business is being attacked. I'll give examples later on. But not only do I worry about an attack, I equally worry about our inertia, where we do nothing. We do nothing. Now, I bring to the Senate and all who are watching's attention, that Leon Panetta, the Secretary of Defense, has called our cyber vulnerability our potential digital Pearl Harbor. We don't want a digital Pearl Harbor. The general ladies from New York, we don't want a cyber 9-11. We can act now. We can act when it is in our power to protect, defend, deter these attacks. That's what I want. I want us to have a sense of urgency. I want us to go to the edge of our chair. I want to put our best thinking on to be able to do the kind of job we need to do to find a sensible center on how we can do that. Right now, our adversaries are watching us. We're debating protecting America from cyber attacks, and we're, it looks like we're doing nothing. That when all is said and done, more gets said than gets done. Do you know what our, our we act like our, our adversaries don't have to spy at us. They can just look at the Senate floor and say, what the heck are they doing? You know what they do? They're going to look at us and say, there they go again. There they go again. We know that their own inability to pass legislation, their own partisan gridlock and deadlock works to our predatory enemies in a positive way. They're saying, well, our first line of attack is for them to do nothing. So we know then that how can we make sure the critical infrastructure is vulnerable? How can we weaken the critical infrastructure? One of which is not to pass legislation, putting in those hardened, resilient ways to protect, defend, and deter. Our adversaries are laughing right this minute. They just have to watch us. Well, I'm telling you, this is no laughing matter. This is no laughing matter. What is the intent of a cyber attack? What is the intent? Is it the same intent as a nuclear attack? Is it the same intent as flying into the World Trade Center? It's all the same. It's to create chaos. It's to create civil instability. And it's to create economic catastrophe that makes 9-11 look like a minuscule. Just think about a cyber attack in which our grid goes down. Think of a blackout in New York. Think of a blackout in Baltimore. You remember when we did the cyber exercise here where it showed what would happen? The stoplights go down. The hospital, the lights go out in the hospitals. The respirators go off. 
business shuts down, commerce shuts down, 9-11 shuts down, America is shut down, and we will be powerless and impotent to put it back on in any quick and expeditious manner. Right now, we are in the situation where we have an early missile detection zone. We know the cyber attack will come. We need to go now to do something. So with this cyber attack, think of the chaos of no electricity. Just think of it. We all go through blackouts, and we had a terrible freak storm here a few weeks ago. And then look at what, no matter how late Pepco, BG&E, Dominion was responding, they could get it back on. What happens if they can't get it back on? What happens if they can't get it back on for weeks or longer? And there we are, powerless and impotent, the President of the United States, wondering what to do. Remember, the attack is to humiliate, intimidate, and cripple. Humiliate, making us look powerless, intimidate, to show there's this power that can do us, and to cripple our functioning as a society. Whew, I find it chilling. We saw an attack on a little country called Estonia. Madam Chair, that's how I got into this, sitting on the Intel Intelligence Committee. I can say it now because it's been more than five years ago. It was brought to my attention that Estonia, a brave little country that resisted communism, now part of NATO, uh, who had challenged the Soviet Union, were, was being attacked. The electricity was going off in Tallinn and around Estonia. We thought on the Intel Committee, that it was going to be the first cyber attack on a NATO nation, and we were going to trigger uh, the NATO Charter Article 5, that an attack on one is an attack on all. Well, thanks to the United States of America, our great British allies, we had the technical know-how to go in and help them. But who's going to have the technical know-how to come in and help us? So we have the technical know-how right now to make our critical infrastructure hardened and resilient. Well, we shouldn't harden our positions so that we can get to a resilient, inf resilient critical infrastructure. I could go on with examples. I know my colleague from Arizona wants to come to the floor, but I just want to say this. I've been really involved in this from not only my work on the Intel Committee, but I fund the Justice Department through the Appropriations Committee and been very involved, hands-on, very involved, hands-on with the policy issues around the FBI. Now, if Director Mueller were here, he would say that the FBI currently has 7,600 pending bank robbery cases. But guess what? He has 9,000 pending cyber banking attacks. We are being more cyber, there are more cyber heists than there are regular heists. That doesn't make it right. Now, is a cyber attack coming? Is it something out of Buck Rogers or Betty Rogers or a Cyber Betty Crocker cookbook or whatever? Our NASDAQ, as the general lady again from New York knows, NASDAQ and the New York Stock Exchange have already been attacked. Hackers have repeatedly penetrated the computer networks at the NASDAQ stock market. The New York Stock Exchange has been the attack of, has been the target of cyber attacks. That sounds so vague, but remember, successful attempts to shut down or steal our information is going on every day. Madam Chair, do you remember 2010? The Dow Jones plunged 1,000 points because of a flash crash. Now, that was a result of turbulent trading, but that can be manipulated by cyber, and it could happen several times a week. What are we going to do? You know, our banking industry clears $7 trillion worth of financial goods and products and actual real money every day. Imagine what would happen if that was thrown into turmoil or shut down. I don't want to go through grim example after grim example, but let me say this. Good people in this body have been working on both sides of the aisle. We were really close. We are really close. And I urge my colleagues now, let's either vote for cloture or come to a regular agreement to be able to offer amendments. 
Because I will tell you this, for those who worry about the cost, for those that worry about regulation, to those who worry about homeland security, I say I understand that. That's why I would be willing to sunset the bill so we could always look ahead and reevaluate. But I want you to know, and I say this right now, if a cyber attack comes and happens to the United States and we have failed to act, we will overreact, we will overregulate, and we will overspend. And why do I have a sense of urgency right now? Let me say this. When we adjourn tomorrow for the August break, we don't come back till September 10th. We will go out somewhere around October 1st. That means we have four, if we don't act by tomorrow or Friday, we will only have essentially about 14 working days in September to do this. Well, we can't let this go. So I conclude my remarks by saying this. To my colleagues on both sides of the aisle, let's be the red, white, and blue party. Let's come to the middle ground here. Let's do what we need to do to protect and defend the United States of America. There are good people who have been working on this, some with extraordinary national security credentials. Let's put our best heads together, come up with the best amendments, and let's come up with the best protections of the United States of America. And let's do it by tomorrow night. God bless America, and I yield the floor.